Hey guys, how y'all doing tonight? Look, I wanted to jump on here and just talk real quick. And I really should probably call this, like, you know, backyard chat or something, because I'm out back again. <clears throat> but it's quiet, and kids are inside, and, you know, it's quiet out here, except for the dogs. So hopefully they won't start barking while I'm on here. Um, I just wanted to kind of chat a little bit about leaving and, and getting on the other side of adult relationship domestic violence for me from my aspect and what I went through now leaving isn't easy it's hard and I don't mean hard as in actually just walking out the door it was everything that followed that everything transpired afterwards um, you know I had left once and went through the court system down in Florida and uh, I had it where I couldn't leave the state with my kids so that meant I couldn't go to my family where my support system was um, and you know well anyways we ended up getting back together so all that stuff was null and void and of course it got really bad so I left and of course I went straight home to my mom and that was in Virginia and uh, ended up getting things rolling there as far as you know child custody and things like that which was really you know good because the ball was in my court as people would say um, and I was very blessed because where my mother worked at the time um, she worked there for a lot of years they had a lot of experience with domestic violence so I was really lucky with that um, I know like when you leave a relationship like that it can get really scary and it did for me you know I, I don't even like to think about it but it was actually scary but it was especially now you know just like with my whole marriage when I look back at it and I think oh my gosh I still can't believe that I tolerated that I put up with it but um, <clears throat> you know when I left he ended up threatening to kill my mom threatening to kill me which was you know that was always a thing but when he threatened to kill my mom, that's when I had to say, oh, no, 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 no. So, you know, I had to let her know. And we ended up, we had court. And, of course, he came in a little bit, you know, a day or two early before court or whatever. And he was supposed to bring the kids toys. And uh, I had told him, you know, just bring, you know, bring their toys. And I told him a certain time. Of course, he didn't do that. And he knew where my mom lived because she still lived in the same place. Um, and happened to be on the phone with her. There's a knock at the door, and my son, who I think was four at the time, ended up going and uh, opening the door and let him in. And you know, trying to just kind of spiraled from there, where um, you know, I. I said, okay, you know, thank you, but you got to leave. You can't be here. My mom's not here. And that was my mom's rule is he was not allowed there unless she was there. Well, next best thing is she was on the phone. <laughs> and as a mom, I, I think about how terrifying that would, was for her. Like, I could only imagine if, if I was in that situation with one of my daughters or one of my sons, you know, um, how horrifying that would be to hear everything that was going on. And, uh, so of course you know he decided he wasn't gonna leave and he was gonna show himself and just so happened you know she's at work and he started getting belligerent name calling you know F and B and all this kind of stuff you know and um, mom immediately got on the phone because like I said where she worked they had a lot of experience with domestic violence and uh, things that weren't so pretty in life, you know. So, um, she got her boss, and they were listening, you know, they could hear what was transpiring. They get on the phone, because they know the police, and they knew the police officer who was over in that area. Um, and so the next thing I knew, here come two police officers, and they weren't playing around, because they had already heard, you know, um, how he was on the phone, and the things that had gone on, and you know, um, he still, I guess he thought he was back in Florida where he, you know, 
could convince the police officers that he was the innocent one and that I was the abuser, <laughs> you know. Um, it just still like, okay. But, um, you know, he, he was the one who was uh, distraught, so to speak. He was the one who was angry. And uh, they didn't play his games. They said, you need to get off the property. This isn't yours, da, da, da. And uh, again, because of where my mom worked, she, one of her coworkers was like, okay, look, she can't be there by herself with the kids. With him in town, he's going to come right back. And just so happened, he had a house. They were getting ready to move and went in hiding for the day. So my mom got off work. And, uh, you know, we ended up, I was at least safe there because he didn't. Or I was pretty sure I was because there was no way he would know where that was, you know, anything about that. So the kids and I hung out there for the day and he couldn't get to us. Now we had court the next day. And very seldom do I think that we really honestly could say we had our day in court, but this one I was able to say I had my day in court. Um, my mom had told me afterwards, she was like, I was very proud of you for that. And when I thought about it, I was like, you and I'm proud of myself, too, because um, I don't even remember, like, the questions that were asked or, or anything like that. Um, I, I know my mom was speaking to the judge, and this judge was not one. He wasn't, like, sympathetic for domestic violence cases, you know, so it was like it could go either way. He could whatever. Well, until my ex decided to show his ass in court. And, um, you know, my, I remember my mom was speaking to the judge saying something. And he decided, my ex, to, he had a piece of paper and he had rolled it up and he started getting mad. <clears throat> so he started raising his voice, starting to yell louder and louder, slamming at the table with his fist and he was mad and if anybody who's been through a domestic violence like this you know how this is, was kind of, well I don't want to say comical but it would have you know it, it's just kind of icing on the cake the female bailiff came over and looked at him and put him in his place and he was just like you better sit your butt down and cut it out and she went and she put herself in between his table and my table and she stayed there for the remainder of it. So he showed himself in court, which for me was good. And my mom was getting upset, and she was like, see, your honor, blah, 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 blah. You know, she, she was visibly shaken. And I stood there at that point in time. I, I guess I should have been an attorney at that time, you know, because I played it cool as cucumber. Ironically, you know, like, I wasn't crying. I, I was just, and I remember, you know, saying, your honor, you, you can see how he is right now. And at that moment when he did what he did, it was sad in a way, but it was it was awesome because there wasn't a doubt in anybody's mind in that courtroom who the perpetrator was, who the violator was, who whatever, you know, because um, he let his anger just take control and he exploded in the courtroom and it was just like, okay, you see what I deal with all the time, you know. Um, and like I said, the physical abuse wasn't necessarily, it wasn't every day, but there was definitely anger and other things that happened. So it was really nice that he showed his butt in court like that. Um, and after that, you know, the threats and all that kind of stuff, he never came back to court again. So it was really easy after that. Um, he didn't show his face again. I think he probably knew he really blew it. Um... I know from the expression on the judge's face, it was kind of like, I think you uh, you showed everybody kind of what you're like on a daily basis, and that's nice. It was, you know, sad, but that's the way it was, you know. So that's why I say I kind of got my day in court, which was just like, oh, so you blew it. And now everybody sees what I've been dealing with all this time. Awesome, you know, like, okay. I mean, most everybody I knew had seen it. Except for, you know, his friends, you know, he's trying to act one way in front of them, but it is what it is, you know. So I had my day in court on that, which was really awesome. And, um, you know, now, all these years later, you know, I married the same guy going on 24 years. I've been together a long time. So 
Um, if I have to hold 12 kids, 10, 10 more kids later, you know. Um, so when I say there's a light at the end of the tunnel, there is. Um, I know that it was it was very scary to leave in, in the process of, of all that that was going on. And, you know, I did have that fear of looking over your shoulder uh, because he did like to play the game of following. He loved to follow me, even to the grocery store. It's crazy, you know. Um, that was just how controlling he was. And like I said, there's so much to every, even if I were just trying to break down monthly, you know, not even daily, just monthly, the crap that went on, the things that he did. He was just, just all about control. And in the end, he, he didn't went out with this chick, you know, so I'm good with that. But um, even though it's hard when you're, when you're going through it and you're paralyzed, and that's what I always call it, when <coughs> paralyzed where you're like, you can't think of what to do next. Even if you had a phone in your hand, could you even call 911 because you're just like froze. You know, my mind would just go in circles. That's how I, that's how I felt when I was in the throes of it. And, you know, in the, that whole, oh my gosh, he's here in town. He says he's coming over. And then he doesn't come over when you say he comes over earlier and you're there by yourself with your kids. Again, a freezing moment. And you're just like, ooh, you know, what do you do? What, you, you know, um, I don't think I'd do that now. But, uh, you know, like I said, there's, it, it was very hard and it was challenging and would I want to go through it again? No. No way. Um, do I want to ever put myself in that position again? No way. Um, I would hope that I would see those red flags and acknowledge them and go, this isn't right. Nobody should be treated this way. Um, I could always hope anyways. But, you know, as long as my husband's still here, then I guess we don't have to worry about it. 24 years and still going, well, hmm. Um, but you know, it is, it is hard to get through it, but most of the time you do. I, I got through it and wow, it's so long ago that I really try to not think about being in that position again, you know? So it is kind of challenging to sit here and, and, and think about things and, wow. Uh, but I, you know, I look at it and I go, wow. My life is, is totally different than it was. I've come a long way. Um, the progress or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what you call it. Just, you know, the, the direction in which your life goes. And mine's gone in a pretty good, pretty good direction. So, you know, and then to remember, you know, really, you're not alone. You're never alone in the situation. You, you really aren't. There's so many women and, and men, too, that are going through these situations or have gone through it um, who just getting ready, like I said, just getting ready to go through it. And it's like, oh no, you know, I, I, I just so wish I could point out those red flags to somebody and go, hey, you know, I don't think this is okay, you know, because um, if you could, oh, any time you could spare somebody from going through what you went through, it would be awesome. To me, it would be phenomenal just be like, hey, I went through this. Don't do it, <laughs> you know. But we all do make our own choices in life, and we all have our own path to walk. So, you know, but hopefully if anybody's going through it, just get out. Get out. And it's, no, it's not easy. But, you know, it's harder is staying, putting up with it, living through it. So, you know, I, you know, like I said, light at the end of the tunnel. You know, look at me. You know, I, at that point in my life, I never thought I would be here. You know, um, I think when you're going through it, you don't ever see yourself not going through it. Whether it's, you don't, you know, did I not think I was worthy of a good relationship? Did I not think I was worth? Well, probably at that time I didn't because they get you so under their thumb where um, you just think you're this horrible person, this hideous person. Nobody's going to want you. You know, he'd say that, you know, I'm the only one who will love you, blah, 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 you know. Maybe that's not love, okay? <laughs> Let's get that straight. That's not love. You don't you don't hurt somebody that you love. You don't, well, intentionally, I suppose, but you don't you know, try and get them under your thumb and control them. That, that's not love. That's control and uh, sickness that's mm -mm -mm, not a good thing to be into. So, like I said, you know, 
I was just thinking about this a lot, going, okay, well, you know what, it, it is hard to leave. And I know for me, yeah, it was, you know, and then to actually leave, like open the door and go out, okay, you know, that that's one step. But to, to stick with it, stay gone, and to deal with all the crap that comes with it and all the fear that comes with it, yeah, that was that wasn't easy either. That, that was hard. But I made it. Here I am now. Look at this old lady, you know. Um, I did waste too many of my young years on him. Mm -mm -mm. But that's okay. Now I'm I'm here living the life, you know. Um, happy not to be in that kind of relationship anymore. That's for sure. Um, and I pray, I, I pray, you know, that anybody who's in that kind of relationship, I pray that, hey, see it for what it is and see your self-worth and get out. Because um, you are worth it. You, you're worth so much more. And you don't need to be treated that way at all. Um, and I know it's really hard to see that sometimes when you're in this situation and you feel like you're about like this big and you're, you know, whatever it is they told you. Um... And a lot of them who are controlling like that do that's how they that's how they do what they do and um, I, I'm not that person now that's for sure you can ask my husband I'm sure he'd probably tell you <laughs> Ooh, no don't no, <laughs> don't mess with her now um, but like I said I, I pray that if you if anybody's in any kind of relationship like that get out and I pray that if you have gone through something like that they you're good and you know that you're good now and that you're working through it and uh is, is it a process a lifelong process probably because i think those things there's definitely triggers there's definitely things that just kind of sneak up and get you and you're like oh wow you know um no matter how much time passes but we're better for it when you get out of it right i mean i i think i am my life is a lot more peaceful now my kids' life is a lot more peaceful so, uh, you know, do I hate that I, I I chose to be with that person and I stayed for so long? Yeah, I do hate that. But I learned a lot from it, and I'm, I'm out now, and I'm good to go. So hopefully, like I said, if anybody's going through that kind of situation, you're not alone. If you've been through it, you're not alone. And uh, there's light at the end. There, there's better out there. So I'm going to get off of here, guys. Get my, talk to you all later. Bye.